Back in July of 2019, I never thought a 240mm AIO would be more than enough for my Ryzen 9 3900X. It's the mid of 2022 now and this frigging new AIO just blew my mind with its performance. Of course, not to the extent that you see my brain parts splattered across a room because if that were the case, then who the hell is making this video and then later editing it. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So I recently got my hands on the uh, Deep Cool LS520, which is a 240mm AIO. And I honestly never thought that testing just another AIO will be this exciting. But that's how innovation can sometimes surprise and excite you. I might sound like a broken record, but Deep Cool has really upped their design language in the past two years or so. I just love how simple and elegant the overall design of the pump is. This pump uses Deep Cool's fourth generation pump design, which is the latest number for the generation of pumps they have. So it should perform the best as compared to the previous generation. I mean, typically that's how it goes, right? All of this is plastic and it carries this mirror finish on the top to reflect those sweet RGB lights throughout its surface. The fans used are Deepcool's FC120 fans that are ARGB compatible and they use a proprietary fan connector which will help them daisy chain with each other like a good but isolated happy family. And the four corners have noise damping rubber pads. There's also no software to control their lighting, so you would need to rely on your motherboard software to do so. Pretty sure that no one who hates installing extra useless junk on their PCs will see that as a con. The tubes are extremely flexible, flex, 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 and the sleeves seem pretty standard too, but of good quality. The tubes also come with two clips on them that can help you mingle the tubes together for a cleaner look. Uh, this is a very tiny addition, but it does bring a lot of value in terms of aesthetics. The radiator fins also had no weird bends on them. The AIO supports still Intel 12th generation right now for Intels, but currently supports the futuristic AMD AM5 chips too, which are not too distant anymore. Pretty nice to see an asymmetrical design of the same brackets for the AM4 and AM5 mounts. Not making extra separate mounts for each one of them saves a lot of metal from the planet Earth and of course our money too. Most of the brackets are metal and have a nice finish on them. The manual has been also planned quite nicely with easy to understand diagrams for tech toddlers. Deepcool has tried to implement a DIY element for this pump by supplying an extra blank plate that can be replaced by the default mirror finish plate that comes pre-installed on the pump. Now on this blank plate you can draw whatever the heck you want and you can customize the darn thing yourself. They've also tried to supply a few of the files which you can print or get the stickers made and post them on the pump's uh, head which is I guess fine. And this is again a pretty small addition but it can bring a lot of value to how your AIO looks. You can customize it as per your own choice and make it stand out among the herd of all the PCs you see around yourself. And if you don't see many then you can care the least about this. Also, this plate can rotate 90 degree steps, so orienting the pump the way you find right will be a 360 degrees affair. The base plate is of standard size with thermal paste pre-applied to it and it is larger than the top surface of the pump because of pyramid schemes, I mean pyramid designs. The radiator's thickness with the fans isn't too fatty that most of the cases will reject it with a left tender swipe because computers don't date yet uh, because they are still computers and not human killing robotic machines. Deepcool has surely had a really smart product design team for all of their recent new stuff and this was apparent during the installation of this AIO. I mean it can't get any simpler than this or maybe it can right after three years i suppose just use the stock backplate for installing an amd processor and install it on the back side of the motherboard and then on the front tighten them with these four screws that are common for both amd and intel chips then screw the am4 slash am5 brackets on the pump space you can of course change the way these brackets go on the pump that is if you need a different orientation than how i am going for my system then you simply put the pump on the underlying screws and then tighten them with their own separate screws alternatively and just like that, the AIO installation was over. Radiator? What's radiator? I installed the radiator on the top because it seemed cleaner and easier. Uh, mostly easier because I'm super lazy. Putting the cables in was also pretty easy. The AIO pump connector from the AIO goes into the AIO pump header on the motherboard. AIO pump connector, AIO header on the motherboard. <sighs> And then the fans were daisy chained together and I hooked their connector to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. I was also easily able to daisy chain the ARGB header from the fans to my case fans. Installing this AIO kept me super duper happy as I hardly had to spend any time installing it. And when I generally spend less time doing something, I stay happy. 
and the AIO just looks gorgeous. I'm a fan of simple design elements and Deep Cool did a 10 out of 10 job when it comes to the overall elegant design they adapted for this AIO. Well, I'm quite convinced and pretty sure that the subtle reflective RGB elements on the pump aren't going to hurt any set of eyes that sets their vision on this pump. That almost sounded like a lame poem and I am not a writer. I mean, a poet. I was honestly so awestruck when I first saw how beautiful the AIO looked after installing it on my system that it made my awes get transferred to Instagram and made my fingers post a story about it. I almost never do that, almost because I did it this one time. The LS520 also really impressed me with its performance. My jaw literally dropped seeing the AIO managing even the 200 watts mark when I tested it inside an open case. And I say that because as you can see with an ambient temperature of 29 degrees Celsius, the AIO managed to keep the max temperature around 92 degrees. This was extremely rare for a 240mm AIO to do on the 3900X. The other two 240mm AIOs I reviewed recently stand nowhere close to how the LS520 performed during my testing. I also ran a quick benchmark test in shadow of the Tomb Raider in stock CPU settings and the temperature didn't rise above 60 degrees Celsius mark when the room temperature was around 30 degrees. But I have to mention that the CPU wattage never crossed 85 watts so that is a crucial factor because the game I tested is not so heavily dependent on the CPU. The noise levels from the fans are typical too, uh, similar to how most of the AIOs sound in this price segment. But for this extra performance and the new age look this AIO has, the LS520 comes at a pricing that is quite a lot more than the other two AIOs I compared it with. But what really boosts my confidence for the LS series is the 5 year warranty claim that Deepcool offers with them. And that is something which really assures a warranty loving fanatic like me that the AIO should last for a long period of time with the least number of failure reports too. But that's only something the passage of time can tell. Either passage of time or either as we grow older. Uh, wait. So yeah, this is about it for this pretty looking AIO which doesn't fall short in the performance sector too. If you like my efforts on the video and you end up choosing this AIO, then you can buy from the affiliate links which I will post below. I mean, that is the only way I currently earn the most from these videos. You can also hop onto our Discord server for more chit chat on relevant content. Take care humans, that's all for today. Mewbot with some more liquid cooling, out.